This is an IBM ThinkPad 765L. And this is an Apple PowerBook 3400. Intel PowerPC. But today, through the magic of Apple's most bohemian 90s operating system, we're installing the same version of Apple Rhapsody on both of these machines. So stay tuned. And if you have extremely specific and obscure tastes in computer nostalgia, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Rhapsody is a late 90s Apple operating system that, shockingly, was released for a brief time for both Apple and PC. The story of how it came to be is pretty interesting, filled with corporate betrayal, spite, desperate acquisitions, and the redemption of Steve Jobs at Apple. I've covered it a few times in the past, so I'll link to some of those videos below. But today, we're gonna mess around with what I think is the most unique aspect of this OS, the somewhat surreal possibility of running the same version of an Apple OS on a 90s Mac and a 90s PC, side by side. So today, that's exactly what I wanna do. On the PC side, I have this, ThinkPad 765L, which is a machine that I was searching for for quite a while because it's almost entirely compatible and has a big, beautiful active matrix color display and uh, some weird design quirks. And on the Macintosh side, I have this lovely PowerBook 3400C, which I got from my friend Mike of Mike's Mess. It's one of the best possible Apple laptops to run Rhapsody on for many of the same reasons. Compatibility, beautiful active matrix display. Speaking of beautiful screens though, this 3400C needs a little attention. The LCD has a few flaws in it. Fortunately, I got this replacement LCD and housing, which is in, well, physically beautiful condition and was sold as perfect working condition. We'll quickly swap this in and hopefully that's the case. I love these super goofy RAM modules these old PowerBooks used. 32 megabytes. Oh yeah, it looks great, look at that. No flaws, no dead pixels, just some dirt. And then while I'm in here, might as well give Rhapsody something a little more solid state to install on instead of this questionable hard drive. We'll go with a nice good old fashioned 32 gig CF card in an adapter. Good news. Everything has gone horribly wrong. As I was assembling and testing this 3400C, I suddenly got that oh so familiar acrid stench of burning electronics from somewhere up in this area. And uh, yeah, it stopped booting. So this is the perfect excuse to ditch this 3400C and replace it with this which is not a 3400C. Right after this quick word about today's sponsor, delete me. Okay, story time. When I was a wee young naive retro, I shared my full name and childhood home address on a vintage computing forum. Search engines picked up this forum post and it was the top result for my name. And then the data brokers picked it up. And for years, long after we moved out of that house and even up until recently, that childhood address haunted me online. And this is exactly the kind of thing that today's sponsor, Delete Me, can help to address. Delete Me not only found all of this information floating out there, but showed me a ton of brokers and websites that have it and helped me delete it. I wonder if that's where they got the name Delete Me from. And with all of the dangers out there online, like phishing, scams, identity theft, that person who read that thing you posted on Reddit, it's more important than ever to protect your private information. And after using Delete Me, I can definitely recommend it. Get 20% off when you go to joindeleteme.com slash retro and use code retro. Again, that's joindeleteme.com slash retro, promo code retro. It's the original PowerBook G3. It is the last 
laptop that Apple really officially supported with Rhapsody. In fact, Rhapsody doesn't support its particular video card and doesn't know what a G3 processor is, but Apple actually released patches for it that we can apply. Now, the reason I didn't want to start off with this laptop, even though I bought it specifically to run Rhapsody, is because it's not really gonna be a fair fight with the ThinkPad because I suspect the PowerBook G3 Kanga is gonna be much faster <laughs> than the old ThinkPad. This is maybe 133 megahertz Pentium. This is a 200 something megahertz G3. Okay, so we've actually already installed Rhapsody on this PowerBook G3 before, but that was on an SSD. So we're gonna do a fresh install of DR2 on the CF card to give the ThinkPad a sporting chance. Okay, so this is the Rhapsody DR2 PowerPC install disc. And funny story, I actually had to fix this install image because it didn't boot up correctly. And we did that in a previous video. If you wanna install this on your own PowerPC Mac, go to the Macintosh Garden in the link down in the description because there is my fixed Rhapsody DR2 image for download. All right, here we are in the next step style installer for Rhapsody. Quite cool. All right, install complete. Let's restart. Haha, <laughs> look at that. A 90s ThinkPad and a 90s PowerBook running the same version of the same 90s Apple operating system side by side. Now, there are some differences here, which I think we'll get into first and compare these, but I must say there are some issues I ran into installing Rhapsody DR2 on this PowerBook, which I kind of glossed over the last time we did it, but I'm going to explain the workarounds that I used to make it a little more bearable, but we'll do that after we have some fun with these. So the first thing to note are the displays. The ThinkPad has a glorious 1024 by 768 resolution, whereas this Kanga can only display Rhapsody in 800 by 600. However, look at how much more beautiful the PowerBook's display is. The colors are so much richer and more vibrant than the poor old ThinkPad. But let's start this off with a uh, quick login test and we'll see which one gets to the desktop first. They are both booting off of the same type of CF card, but the PowerBook is much faster. But look at that, actually. <laughs> the ThinkPad, despite being much slower, got to the desktop much more quickly than the PowerBook. Let's drag Windows around and see what that looks like. Yeah, the display on the PowerBook is much, much nicer. And networking does work on the PowerBook, so we can pop over to rhapsodyos.org and download some useful stuff. Well, OmniWeb works pretty great. We'll get the last version of OmniWeb and the patches for this PowerBook Kanga. All right, let's try launching some other stuff side by side to see how they compare. Starting with everyone's favorite game, Boink Out. Well, <laughs> it opened immediately on the Kanga. For some reason, it's running very fast on the ThinkPad. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's, well, impossible to play on the ThinkPad. All right, my favorite thing to try, GNU Chess, which is the same chess that's made its way all the way through the years in Mac OS. And that one launched much faster on the ThinkPad. Wow, that is weird. Uh, it's so funny to see these running the same applications with the same window decorations right next to each other. Yeah, screen redraw 
on the PowerBook is much better than the ThinkPad. All right, remember stickies from the classic Mac OS? Yeah, Rhapsody has stickies and <laughs> stickies on the ThinkPad. Ah, oh, that's so funny. I love Rhapsody. If we fancy watching a film, we can open up QuickTime Player. We'll open the sample movie at the same time. Let's play both at the same time. Oh my god. It's a different video on the Mac. Look at that. We found a very weird, obscure difference. Rhapsody DR2 includes a slightly different sample QuickTime video on Intel versus PowerPC. This is the kind of late breaking news you come to this channel for. All right, let's use the sound app on both of these to see if we can record and play back audio. This is a test of the Macintosh broadcasting system. This is a test of the Macintosh broadcasting system. This is a test of the Macintosh broadcasting system. Now, here's something that only the PowerBook can do in Rhapsody, and that's the blue box macOS environment. Wow, that was a heck of a chime. <laughs> yeah, this gives us a macOS 8.1 environment through the blue box enabler. And actually, I don't know how much slower this is than just running it natively because this is running on the CPU. So yeah, this is actually pretty quick and we can see the Mac OS 9 partition here. <laughs> so we can actually share stuff back and forth and just launch it from within Rhapsody. Okay, now I wanna talk a little bit about issues you might have installing Rhapsody DR2 on a PowerPC Mac. You see Rhapsody has its own file system and the Mac does not by default recognize it as a boot volume uh, like it would if it was a Mac OS boot volume. So the Rhapsody installer actually sets up parameter RAM variables and open firmware to point to the bootloader for Rhapsody on its partition. But if your PRAM gets erased by say, not having a working PRAM battery in a 20 something year old laptop and not having a working main battery, well, the Mac is not gonna know how to get back to Rhapsody. Let me show you. We will shut down the computer, unplug it, and take out the surprisingly still functional lithium ion battery. Now when we put everything back together, it's gonna boot right up into our macOS 9 partition. And if we go into control panels, startup disk, well, there's no Rhapsody here either. So it is not obvious how to get back to Rhapsody. If you look in the documentation on the Rhapsody install CD, it talks about needing to copy this multi-booter application to your Mac OS partitioner drive in order to be able to see your Rhapsody partition and this can actually tell open firmware how to get back to that partition and boot from it. So. This one here is our Rhapsody install on our CF card. Now I ran into an additional issue. Ah, yeah, just did it. Sometimes when you click save for the boot up disk, you get an error. So what I actually did was copy over not just that multi-boot application, but also the one from macOS server, which is the final version of Rhapsody actually. And that's under utilities and system disk utilities on the Mac OS X server install CD. And there's an extension and a system disk application, which is just an updated version of the multi-booter app. And I have found that when one app doesn't work, the other will. And if neither works, reboot and try them both again. Now we're gonna have to restart. <laughs> All right, and after a quick reboot, voila, this time it worked. <laughs> so now when we restart, we'll boot back up into Rhapsody. Beautiful. 
Now, I just wanna briefly mention, there is an ulterior reason why I'm doing this video now. You see, I'm going out to the inaugural VCF SoCal next week, and I wanted to have an exhibit that I could bring with me in a suitcase. And uh, I thought, what better than running Rhapsody on a pair of unlikely twins? Because I found that a lot of people don't actually know this part of the history of Apple, and it's so freaking interesting. Three unlikely friends running Apple's most obscure operating system. I can't wait. Okay, so this was a really fun video to make. I don't know if you can tell, but I really, really like Apple Rhapsody. And I take any opportunity to mess around with it and show it off to people. So I can't wait to bring this stuff to VCF SoCal, and I hope I'll see you there. But that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman 1, Alex Hoffman 2, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Out Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Eric Shields, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George F. Rosansky, Greg from Prut Game Mods, James Fryman, James Laurie, Jason Papaz, Jason Zell, Camille Rakowski, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowall, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Tom Woodfin, Unknown Soldier 41, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.